let's uh, continue our discussion of uh, inverse Laplace transforms and tackle uh, the complex roots case. I'll look at a slightly more complicated example here where x of s is uh, 6 over s plus 34 and the denominator is actually it's a third order denominator uh, s s squared plus 10 s um, plus 34 um, I can factor the denominator and if I do that I find it actually has complex roots um, s plus 5 minus j3 so the root here would be at minus 5 plus j3 and then s plus 5 plus j3 again with uh, the, the Laplace transforms we'll be working with where uh, all the, the coefficients of these polynomials are real uh, if we get a complex root we'll also get another root at its complex conjugate location so again I could use uh, partial fraction expansion directly here um, and write this in terms of uh, a sum uh, of partial fractions over each of these denominator terms k2 and then um, we'll find in this case that it's a requirement that if I'm going to get a real result the numerator terms here of the complex conjugate pair terms will also be complex conjugates uh, if I take this approach, uh, you know, you can find these uh, entries actually in our in our table of transforms. Um, but I have to do uh, you know a lot of complex number arithmetic to get there. Um, uh, an alternative approach, which I prefer, uh, which uh, allows you to avoid any complex uh, arithmetic, is starting with our Laplace transform function s squared plus 10s plus 34 I'll write that as again, a k1 over s term but then I'll leave the rest of this uh, as a second order polynomial okay. so um, instead of factoring it into its complex roots uh, any second order polynomial that has complex roots, I'll, I'll leave it in its second order form. The numerator here, and what you have to remember, the numerator is no longer just a constant, but I can have a uh, s term. So I'm going to write this as a s plus b. Um, I can find k1 using uh, the lookup method. Let me write it. I'm sorry, the, the um, cover up method. Uh, so again, I just cover up the s term, uh, evaluate this at s equal to zero, and I'm actually going to get in the numerator here six times 34. Um, in the denominator, again, after covering up this s term, the denominator will reduce to 34. So k1 becomes equal to, equal to six. Okay. And then the method I prefer now for um, uh, finding a and b is actually to uh, 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 equate coefficients after multiplying both sides by the denominator of the left hat, uh, left hand side. So on the left hand side, after doing that, I'll get 6 s plus 34. I've already found k1, so I'll plug it in as 6. The, after multiplying through by the denominator here, the s term will cancel, and I'll be lift, left with 6 s squared plus 10s plus 34 and then here can multiply after multiplying both sides by the denominator of the left hand uh, left hand side the uh, denominator polynomial will cancel and I'll be left with s times a s plus b okay. and since the left hand side and the right hand side of um, this equation has to be equal for all values of s, then the coefficients of the polynomials on both sides of, of the equal sign here um, have to be equal. And so I'll use that 
to actually then find A and B. So if I take a look at the S squared terms on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I see on the left-hand side there is no S squared term, so or the corresponding coefficient of the S squared term is zero. On the right-hand side, I see that I've got a, a 6 multiplied by an S squared. That would be the only S squared term here. And then here, this is going to give uh, be AS squared plus BS. So again, the coefficient of the S squared term there is A. And so from this, I get directly that A is equal to minus 6. Okay. Now we take a look at the s terms or the s to the first power terms on the left hand side I see I've got a 6s on the right hand side I'm going to have a 60s here and then uh, from this this last term I'll get uh, sorry the s wouldn't appear the coefficient is just 60 and then from uh, uh, this last term I'll have a bs so the coefficient is b and so this would give me then b is equal to minus 54. Okay. So I've found all of the terms in the partial fraction expansion, k1, a, and b. Um, I do have another uh, term I can check, and that's uh, the, the constant terms on both sides here, um, uh, or the s to the 0 terms. Uh, on the left-hand side here, I have uh, 6 times 34. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to get, um, um, from here, I'll get 6 times 34. And here, there is no constant term in this last expression because of it. I'll have AS squared plus BS. So in this case, this, this just reduces to a check on my uh, arithmetic. I can actually use this, this method to, to find the K1 term. Um, and in this case, I, I would have found k1 uh, directly as, as being equal to 6 if I had left it as an unknown and then applied this, this method. But it was a little easier to find k1 using the, the cover-up method. Um, so now that I've got the pieces, if I put them together to get my expression for the Laplace transform, I'll have 6 over s, and I'll... I'll leave that second order term like this, s squared plus 10s plus 34, and then uh, s plus 9. Hey, we can actually use, um, this, this is in the table. This is rule 10c from, from the handout. Uh, I can directly find the Laplace transform. It, it's kind of a complicated e expression. The 6 over s term becomes 6 over u, 6 times ut, and then this I can apply rule 10c from the table, and uh, when I do all that I'll get 10 times e to the minus 5t cosine of 3t minus 53.1 degrees times u of t. Um, I don't really like uh, using uh, 10C. It's, it's okay. I think it's, it's fairly involved. Usually if I'm dealing with a um, uh, second order uh, polynomial that has complex roots, I'll, I'll take a different approach um, by actually trying to write uh, the second order term as a sum of uh, terms 9a and 9b in the table. And, and this can always be done. Uh, so just going back to my x of s, it was 6s. Um, and then uh, minus 6 times s plus 9. I'm going to uh, write the denominator in a, a slightly different form. By completing the square here, s plus 5. So I'll have, this will give me an s squared, and then my 10s term, and then I'll, I'll also, with the 5, I'll get 25. So I have to actually add 9 
to get the 34 that's in the original expression. So expand this, I'll get s squared plus 10s plus 25 plus 9, which gives me the, the 34 that's in the original expression. Uh, so, but I want to get this in the form of looking at, for example, 9a. Um, I've, I've got an s plus a squared plus b squared in the denominator. I want to get an s plus a in the numerator. So I, I can I have to do uh, a little algebra trick here. So s plus 5 squared plus 9. I want to get an s plus 5 in the numerator. So I'll just write s plus 5. And then I've got a add the 4 to maintain the equality. So I've got the same as in the previous expression. What this allows me to do then is break apart this term, the second order term, into s plus 5 over s plus 5 squared plus 9. It's, it's actually written as uh, b squared, so I can write that as 3 squared uh, in the table comparing to, to 9a. Um, and then I'll have minus 6. And then I'd have in the numerator uh, a 4, but let me hold off on that for just a second. I have an s plus 5 squared and plus 3 squared. And if you look at uh, 9b, what's supposed to appear here is a 3 to match the pattern in rule 9b. I've got a 4. Uh, let me just pull the 4 out in front. I can put a 3 here and then divide by 3. Okay. So now this part matches 9b exactly. This part matches 9a. And so now I can use those rules to find x of t. This first term becomes 6u of t. Here I'll have uh, minus 6 uh, using rule 9a, minus 6, uh, e to the minus 5t, and then this is uh, the cosine term, cosine of uh, 3t, u of t, and then here, uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, I'll have minus 8, e to the minus 5t, sine of 3t, and this matches rule 9b, all times u of t, as uh, the answer. It doesn't look uh, to be uh, the same as the result we got using uh, 10c earlier, um, but you can use some uh, trigonometric identities to, to show that they are, in fact, identical. Uh, the, the final case I want to look at is the repeated root case when you're doing a partial fraction expansion. So uh, again, that has to be handled specially. So uh, work through an example here: 8s plus 10 over um, s plus 1 times s plus 2 cubed. So we've got this repeated root, okay. the s plus 1 term. I notice that the order of the denominator, which it would be of order 4 now, is greater than the order of the numerator, so it is in proper form. Um, I can uh, um, handle the s plus 1 term just uh, as I would previously with a constant here. For the repeated roots, though, um, I would have an s, and then it has to be expanded as s plus 2 cubed, and then also s plus 2 squared, and then also s plus 1. So I start with the highest power, and then also have to include terms for successive powers, all the way down to the first power. Uh, I can get the s plus 1 coefficient. Um, by just using the cover-up method, uh, evaluating uh, the left-hand side at uh, s equal to minus 1. So in the numerator, I would have 2. In the denominator, I'm going to have minus 1 plus 2, or 1 cubed. So 
and that just gives me a, a coefficient of 2 here. Um, for this higher order, highest order term, make sure you have them in this order. It, this coefficient I can also determine by the cover-up method. I multiply, again, both sides by s plus 2 cubed. I would just be, and then evaluated at s equal to minus 2, I would just be left with the coefficient here on the right-hand side. So again, cover this up, uh, evaluated at s equal to minus 2, I'll have uh, minus uh, uh, 16 plus 10, or minus 6, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, so minus 6 divided by minus 1. This term is just 6. Uh, I can't use a cover-up method for, for these two terms. Let me, let me just call them A and B. Okay. So again, uh, 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 there are a couple other methods that I haven't mentioned. I could plug in two particular values of, of S as long as they're not roots. I couldn't use S equal minus 1 or S equal minus 2, but I could plug in S equal to 0 on both sides here and get one equation involving just the unknowns A and B. I could plug in another value of, of s, um, you know, perhaps s equal to plus 1, again, I can't use the s equal minus 1 term, to get a second equation involving a and b. And then we could use uh, a, a matrix method to find a and b, or, or uh, just uh, back substitution in that case. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is, uh, using the method I, uh, we used before, um, uh, to, uh, I'll multiply both sides by the denominator here, so I'm just left with 8s plus 10, and on the right-hand side, this will become 2. Uh, the s plus 1 term will cancel, and I'll be left with s plus 2 cubed, and then here I'll be left with 6 times s plus 1 times, I'm multiplying by s plus 2 cubed, so those terms will cancel. And then here I'll have a s plus 1. Here I've got s plus 2 cubed divided by s plus 2 squared, so I'll have an s plus 2. And then finally for b, I'll have, um, uh, this should have been an s plus 2 here, sorry, not an s plus 1. Uh, um, I'll have a b s plus 1 and then I'll have an s plus 2 squared. And then now I can uh, again equate uh, coefficients on both sides of, of this equation. The highest order term on the right hand side is an s cubed. So looking at s cubed terms, there is no s cubed term on the left hand side, so that evaluates to 0. I have to expand this out, so uh, you know, this would be uh, s plus 2 times s plus 2 times s plus 2. Again, that highest order term would just, just have uh, an s square, s cubed with a coefficient of 1, but it's all multiplied by 2. So the coefficient of the s cubed term, once I expand this out, would be 2. There is no s cubed term here. Multiply this out, there is no s cubed term here. Here I'm going to get, you know, if I multiply this out again, I'll get just a leading s cubed term. And so here I'll get uh, just b, and so I, I get directly here that that b is equal to minus 2 um, if I evaluate my s squared terms. Okay. Again, there's no s squared term here on the left, so I get 0. Here, uh, if I multiply uh, this expression out, uh, expand this out, this actually becomes s cubed plus 6s squared plus 12s plus 8. So you'll have to multiply that out uh, so to check that. But the corresponding uh, uh, s squared coefficient is 6, and then times the leading 2, that becomes a 12. Here there is no s squared term. Here I'll get s plus 1 times s plus 2. That, that will lead to an s squared term with a coefficient of a. And then here I, I, I'll need to expand this out again and look at the corresponding uh, coefficient of the s squared term. It turns out to be 5, so I, I'm left with uh, 5b here. Okay. And from this I can solve for a. I've already got b is equal to 
minus 2, so I'll have 12 plus or minus 10, or 2 plus a is equal to 0, so I'll get a is equal to minus 2. I could, I could check my s to the first power terms and then my constant terms or my s to the zero power terms, but I found all the, the coefficients at this point. So there's no need to actually do that uh, other than it does provide a nice check on my arithmetic. It would, um, if uh, S1 and the S0 expressions check out, uh, I can be fairly confident that I've, I've found all of my coefficients correctly. Um, again, I, I could have used uh, this method to determine the other two unknown coefficients here, but usually they're, they're much easier to determine using uh, that cover-up method. So now I'm in a position, I've got x of s expanded, uh, so I can find the corresponding time function. Uh, this first term uh, becomes 2 e to the minus t u of t. Uh, the second term, looking that up in the uh, table, uh, this become, would become 3 t squared e to the minus 2 t u of t. Um, the a term up here, I've got a is minus 2, that becomes minus 2 t e to the minus 2 t u of t. And then finally, I have my b term, which is minus 2, that's just minus 2 e to the minus 2 t u of t. So, that's how you handle repeated roots. So, we've got... Um, really three cases uh, that, that we'll uh, be looking for. First thing you want to check is, uh, is it an improper or proper ratio? If it's improper, then do synth set synthetic division um, so that you get a constant plus a, a proper fa fraction. And then um, you have to factor the denominator and then you've got uh, the uh, three separate cases you're looking for. Um, we'll have the distinct real roots. It's probably the easiest case to handle. Uh, the other case that you'll have would be uh, repeated roots, okay, which we just looked at. And then the final case that we looked at previously is the complex roots. Okay. And these three cases all handled differently with regard to the partial fraction expansion. So, you know, remember the rules, especially with uh, repeated roots, that um, you have to have uh, not only um, the S, in this example, the S plus 2 cubed term, but also in the partial fraction expansion an s plus 2 squared and an s plus 2 term in your in your complete partial fraction expansion